Welcome to episode two of this series on drawing tablet lag. There are two kinds of lag, pointer lag and brush lag. In this episode, we will focus on pointer lag. Pointer lag is the difference between where you see the tip of the pen and where the computer thinks the pen is. The computer will draw a pointer at that location where it thinks the pen is. That's why they call it pointer lag. You can see this pointer lag just by taking a look at how the pen moves relative to your operating system's desktop. This is the Wacom Cintiq Pro 27, and you can clearly see the pointer lag. Keep in mind, this is the most expensive pen display you can buy in 2023. It costs $3,500, and this amount of pointer lag is normal for a pen display. In episode one, I compared the pointer lag across several different pen displays. The Wacom Cintiq Pro 27 actually has a little less pointer lag than most other pen displays. But no pen display I've ever seen has as little pointer lag as you will find with an Apple iPad Pro using the Apple Pencil 2. Comparing pen tablets and pen displays, you'll see that pen tablets have incredibly little pointer lag, but they do have just a tiny bit. But it is much less than you will get from any pen display or even an iPad. So far, I've been showing you pointer lag on the operating system desktop. What about in a creative application, one where you are drawing strokes? Well, these kinds of creative applications vary quite a bit in how they show the pointer location. Some will show a brush shape at the pointer location. Other times they don't show a pointer location at all. And sometimes they show the pointer location separately from the brush location. So it can be a little tricky to figure out where the pointer is in some of these applications. Here's an example with Krita. On the top, you can see the default setting for Krita. You will see the brush shape shown near where the stroke is being drawn. And the pointer location is not shown at all. At the bottom, I have configured Krita to show the location of the pointer. And you can see how it differs from the brush location. Latencies, rates, and position smoothing all contribute to pointer lag. For latency, we are talking about the pen to computer latency. This is how much time it takes the tablet to detect pen motion and that transmit that information to your computer. For rates, I am talking about the tablet's report rate. This is the number of times a second that the tablet is sending pen data to the computer. Position smoothing is the mathematical transformation of pen position data to eliminate uneven or jerky motion. Position smoothing can occur in the tablet firmware or in the tablet driver or both. But in either case, it contributes to pointer lag. This is the pen gesture to display pipeline diagram. I showed it to you in the first episode to help frame the discussion for both pointer lag and brush lag. Because we are talking about pointer lag in this video, I've highlighted the relevant regions on the diagram in orange. Recording pointer lag with the camera is very difficult. Sometimes the pointer lag is just too small to be noticed, especially when the pen is moving slowly. And when the pen is moving fast, the camera might have a hard time capturing what is going on. When you are drawing, you might feel like there is a lot of pointer lag, that it is very obvious for you in the feeling of the pen. But that feeling just does not come across on video. Another challenge when trying to show you pointer lag is that we have three contributors to pointer lag. The pen to computer latency, the report rate, and the position smoothing in the firmware or driver. And those three things are happening all at the same time. But unfortunately, those effects cannot be isolated. So it makes it difficult to figure out how a specific thing is contributing to the lag. Instead of recording pointer lag with a camera, I wrote a simulation application. This simulation application allows me to exaggerate the effects of pointer lag so that it is obvious for you. The simulation also lets me independently control the latency, the report rate, and the smoothing. The simulation application looks like a drawing program, but it is not. Think of it as like a dynamic whiteboard diagram. You could think of the white region as the screen of a pen display, like a Wacom Cintiq. And the sharp stick represents a pen. The tablet sends pen position data to the computer at a certain rate, that's the report rate. 
Here, you can see the individual positions being reported to the computer. The simulation shows them as these little black dots. The dots represent where the computer thinks the pen is. So the dots are where the computer would draw a pointer if one was being drawn. And these dots are connected by these lines. But just remember, the computer really only knows about the dots. The lines are just there to help you see the overall movement of the pen. In the simulation, the report rate is constant. So if I move the pen faster, the dots are more spread out. And if I move the pen slower, the dots are more concentrated. By default, the simulation is configured to have minimal pointer lag. This means the latency is set to low, the report rate is set to high, and the position smoothing is set to zero. First, we will explore the pen to computer latency. It takes time to get the motion from the pen to be detected, digitized, and sent to the computer. The current setting for latency is low. But even now, at this setting, the black line as I draw does not quite match with the tip of the pen, especially as the pen moves faster. So there's already a little bit of pointer lag. And remember, all digital pen devices have some amount of latency and thus some amount of pointer lag. Now I will turn on high latency. You can see that the end of the black line does not follow the tip of the pen as closely as before. This is because the data from the pen is now taking a little longer to get to the computer and that shows up as pointer lag. Now let's talk about report rate. You'll notice two things happen as the report rate gets lower. First, the accuracy of the stroke will diminish because there's less pen data coming in every second. And because there are fewer positions to draw, there's a bigger distance between the reported pen positions. Your eyes will perceive this as a kind of pointer lag. This is what it looks like with a high report rate and things look normal. Now I will switch to a low report rate. You can clearly see how a low report rate contributes to making a drawing stroke which is not as accurate to the true motion of the pen. You can also see how the black line is really segmented now because there are fewer data points. And now you can understand why a higher report rate is useful. It lets our pen strokes be captured more accurately. And this is very helpful in a creative application like Clip Studio Paint or Krita. And you can also see the kind of pointer lag that occurs. It looks a little different from the lag caused by high latency. With high latency, the black line is simply delayed in following the pen. With a low report rate, even if there is low latency, what you're seeing is that the black line is making fewer, bigger jumps towards the pen position. And that's what makes it look like there is more pointer lag. Now let's play around with position smoothing. The amount of smoothing is controlled by this alpha slider. Alpha ranges from zero to one. As alpha gets closer to zero, there's less smoothing. As alpha gets closer to one, there is more smoothing. If alpha is exactly zero, then there is no smoothing at all. Smoothing is turned off. If alpha is exactly one, we can call that infinite smoothing. And infinite smoothing is not useful. I'll cover the exact reason why in episode three. Instead of relying on the black line, the simulation will draw the smooth positions as a red line. That red line will be drawn simultaneously with the black line. This will help you understand the relationship between the raw pen position data and the smooth pen position data. Alpha is set to zero. This means no smoothing. And now I will turn on the rendering of this smooth data and that red line will appear. Now you don't see the black line, you just see the red line. And the reason for that is there's no smoothing, so the red line has the same exact shape as the black line. And because we're drawing the red line on top of the black line, it's hiding the black line and you can't see the black line. Now let's set alpha to 0 0.5. When I move the pen slowly, the paths of the red and black line converge or are at least very close. However, as I start moving the pen faster, you can see that the red and black lines start to diverge somewhat. And you might be able to see that the red line is lagging behind the black line just a little bit. This lag will also account for some pointer lag, though it is probably a little hard to see even with the alpha set to 0.5. Now I will set the alpha to 0.95. This is a lot of smoothing. And now you can clearly see that the red line and the black line really diverge. 
Also, the red line obviously lags behind the black line. This amount of smoothing is very atypical. It's not something you would normally see implemented in either the tablet firmware or the tablet driver. I'm just showing you this exaggerated amount of smoothing so you understand that smoothing will have an impact on pointer lag. Now we are done with the simulation part of this video. If you're interested in playing around with the simulation code, it's all available on GitHub. Let's dive a little bit into the pen to computer latency. There are many things that contribute to this latency and the resulting pointer lag. Most of these things you have no control over, but there is one component that you have some direct control over that does affect latency. And that is the connection type between your tablet and your computer. Pen displays, the tablets that have a screen, they are always connected with cables to your computer. So we don't need to talk about them in this discussion on latency. Where it gets interesting is for a pen tablet. These kinds of drawing tablets can connect to a computer in potentially three different ways. All pen tablets support a wired connection to your computer. That means using a USB cable. Many pen tablets support a wireless connection using Bluetooth. And a small number of pen tablets support a wireless connection that is not using Bluetooth. In this case, they will have their own USB receiver. As far as I know, no one has ever measured the latency for pen tablets across these three different connection types. However, maybe there is something we can learn from some research done by ratings.com. They looked at the left click latency of over 300 mice. And for each of the three connection types, they measured the click latency over 200 times. Roughly speaking, they saw something like this. A wired connection, a USB cable, had very low latency. Wireless connections that were not using Bluetooth also had really good latency. Sometimes these were very close or even matched the wired connections. Wireless Bluetooth connections not only had much greater latency in general, this connection type also had much more variance in the latency numbers. The research by ratings.com was done for mice and they were measuring left click latency. But perhaps it is a good starting point for us to think about pen tablets. So if you want to minimize latency because you want to minimize pointer lag, then the technique I would recommend is to start with a USB connection. If your tablet supports it, then a wireless non-Bluetooth connection is another viable option. Unfortunately, the real problem here is very few pen tablets support non-Bluetooth wireless. And for Bluetooth, if you are concerned about latency and pointer lag, I recommend you think of Bluetooth more as a secondary option because it will have more latency and you will see more pointer lag. And because the greater variance of latency might result in unpredictable pointer lag. Maybe in the future, wireless options will become better for pen tablets. For example, maybe there will be a new version of Bluetooth that has better latency and less variance in latency. I don't want to put you off using Bluetooth. If you're using it today and you're happy, then that's great. But if you are using Bluetooth and you are sensitive to pointer lag and you want to minimize it, I would suggest that you try a wired USB connection and see if you feel an improvement. Now let's look at report rate. Typically, a tablet is sending pen data to a computer at around 100 to 200 times a second. That information includes the pen position, tilt, pressure, the status of the buttons, etc. Tablet specs, especially when comparing across tablet manufacturers, are kind of a controversial topic. So I'm going to focus on a single brand, the leading brand of tablet out there, which of course is Wacom. Since 2017, Wacom has released nine pen tablets for which they have published the report rate data. There are three Intuos Pro tablets that have a report rate of 200. That means they send 200 reports per second. These are the professional series of pen tablets from Wacom. The remaining six are consumer pen tablets from Wacom. This is split between the Wacom Intuos pen tablets and the one by Wacom pen tablets. The takeaway here is that if Wacom is using 200 reports per second for their professional line of pen tablets, which right now are the best pen tablets you can buy, that is probably a sufficient report rate. 
But to be honest, I think you can get by fine with a report rate of 133. Will we ever see a tablet with a really high report rate like 500 times a second or 1000 times a second? I hear that some gaming devices like mice do have that kind of report rate. But I haven't seen any signs that tablet manufacturers are going to go with these higher report rates. I hope they do, because it will be beneficial for us. A higher report rate should decrease the pointer lag. And a higher report rate should make our drawing strokes more accurate, especially when you're moving your pen very fast or across a big distance. But for now, I think we are fine at 200 reports per second. One final note on position smoothing. Position smoothing is a really complex topic. There are lots of different ways to smooth data. And there is a little bit of math involved. So I am going to save that discussion for episode 3. In that episode, we'll talk all about the math. You'll understand where alpha comes from. You'll know why an alpha of 1, what I called infinite smoothing, is a bad thing. We'll talk about what options exist, if any, to remove or control position smoothing in the tablet firmware or tablet driver. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm.